And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Insight on Business, powered by our advertising agency, Insight Advertising, Marketing, and Communications, a full-service advertising agency based here in the city of Des Moines, Iowa. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, this is very interesting. This is relative to responsive website design. And why is it so important? Well, we've got a graphic here we want to show you that talks about um, the utilization of mobile versus uh, desktop. Now, th these trends, this is really startling. I want you to pay attention very closely to this. You see we're in 2013. You see those intersecting lines? Well, those intersecting lines simply mean that there are more people now accessing websites, mobile websites, from their mobile devices than what they are from desktop. As a matter, this is a worldwide statistic, by the way. So you can see where in 2007 it was relatively normal for people to utilize their desktop, but now that curve for desktop internet users has flattened out, and yet mobile internet users continue to soar. So what does that mean for your business? Well, it's pretty simple. If your website cannot be seen on a mobile device, you're out of the loop. We shared with you years ago a razorfish study that said individuals who go to a website, if they have a negative, negative experience on the website, 93% of them will never darken that door again. So if you can't be seen on an iPhone or an Android or a tablet of some kind, if you can't be seen and be able to interact with clients, that's bad news. Last week I had a telephone call from a friend of mine and a partner of ours with, uh, his name's Andy Priestley from D Webware. D Webware is a, a wonderful company, been in business since 2001. We've done quite a bit of business with uh, D Webware over the years. And we, the, Andy said, hey, come, Michael, you wanna come on down here? We're gonna talk about responsive web design. So I did. I went down and visited with Andy and Jennifer and Jordan and came away with a better appreciation of what of what responsive web design is. Huh? So look, if you have, first of all, if you have a website that's older than two or three years, I'm sorry, it's just not going to work on many, many platforms out there. If you've got a website that hasn't been optimized for mobile use, you've got another issue. We have very low cost options to go mobile, and then we have the creation of responsive website design. That means that across any platform, your site is going to be able to be viewed and you can interact with it. So what are the, uh, what are the important things that, that I picked up from my session with Andy Priestley and D Webware? Well, number one, how many of your websites, think about this for just a minute, how many of your websites are simply a billboard of what your company is? Think about that for a second. Do you have any real physical call to action on the homepage of your website? And is that text searchable for SEO? Oftentimes, kids, it's not. If you're simply using an image of some kind and floating those images along and you have static text on your website, that's not interactive. And as a matter of fact, oftentimes people will forego updating the website for months, if not years. And that simply drives your ranking in Google searches and your SEO further down. So here's the tip. On your home page, make sure that you have some kind of a call for action and allow that to be responsive and so that people can see it across the platforms that, that are out there. Uh, number two, how do you look? How do you look? Is there a lot of mumbo jumbo on there? A lot of stuff that is really extraneous that you don't need any longer? Is your about page more read more like war and peace than what it does be informative? to your potential customers. Make sure if you're doing e-commerce on your site, you can quickly and easily and seamlessly go back and forth. Responsive website designs, we've got a story coming up in just a little bit about who's using mobile applications and how well they work. And consider this, and I know if you had your site done as a, uh, as a, as a desktop site and then a mobile site, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 20 months ago, you're not looking forward to spending a lot of money going forward and doing a brand new website design that's responsive. Well, we've got some hint for you on that. 
Uh, once you do a responsive website, you're done for a while anyway. But I have seen so many websites that look absolutely awful and you can't interact with them. And number three, the thing about responsive websites that I loved is the utilization of social media within the website. Now, the placement of your cert, of your uh, sharing buttons, how if you do have a blog, and I hope that you do have a blog, we consider that to be a very important part of your marketing and, uh, and presentation of your business gives a voice to what it is that you do. If you do have a blog, can I share that blog with my friends, family, neighbors? Think about it this way. You've got a tribe, say on Facebook or on Twitter or some other social media standing, YouTube, you've got this tribe that follows you. And if I read a blog that I'm really interested in and I share it with my tribe, that then becomes tenfold more important. I'm basically saying, hey, this is kind of a neat article. I hope that you read up on it. It's the same in business, ladies and gentlemen. If you're doing a blog, can I share that blog with one click? Responsive website design. If you need more information about that, uh, give us a call. We'd certainly appreciate talking to you about that and how we can be assistive in making that happen for your business. If you've got some uh, questions and or answers, you can always contact us here on our Twitter stream. We follow Insight ADV, that's Insight ADV before, during, and after uh, the show just to keep everybody uh, ramped up and what's going on. Let's talk about another, let's switch gears here for just a minute. The other day I was listening to uh, the radio and I heard an ad, I, I still listen to the radio, the real broadcast radio. I think there's, you know, there's phenomenal things that go on there sometimes. I, I prefer NPR, by the way, but that's another story. But I was listening to a commercial radio station the other day, and uh, our friend from eHarmony, who has been the voice of eHarmony for now years, uh, Dr. E. e. Cooley, something I, I can't recall, um, was talking about, that he said this, let me, let me see if I can bring the quote up for you because I thought it was astonishing. We know, this is a quote, we know that lots of folks are just not ready to get married. So have you considered eHarmony to meet a quality person to date? eHarmony for a quality person to date. It was, my head was spinning. I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Gone all of a sudden was this whole branding mechanism that talks about um, the importance of marriage. So what's behind all that? D did I get you that uh, image on marriage? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is what I think is very startling. Uh, these, this is the U.S. marriage rate from 1980 to 2008 and projected on through 20, um, 2035 or so. So look at this. Marriage rates in the United States have been dropping like a rock for decades. And so why would eHarmony go ahead and switch up their brand and talk about dating versus marriage? Well, there's the proof standing right in front of you as they realize their consumers are deciding perhaps not to marry or hold off marrying for a longer time. And they said, hey, why don't we go ahead and take advantage of this and start marketing to people who want to date and have a quality date. That's that's the thing about eHarmony. Now, why am I telling you this? What the heck do you care about eHarmony talking about dating versus marriage? Because it's a consumer trend that eHarmony looked at and said, you know what? We need to adjust our market, our marketing efforts to also attract people who are not seriously considering marriage and work into the dating cycle utilizing the same brand strength that we have about being a high quality uh, service that matches people on all kinds of levels. So obviously the statement is we realize some people aren't ready to become married, but you'd like to have a high quality date. Why don't you choose eHarmony? So here's the message for you and the takeaway for you. What are the consumer trends that are altering how people do business with your company? Do you know them? Are you staying uh, up to date on exactly what those people are talking about when it comes to your particular business silo and the trends that affect you. I hope that you are because it is absolutely critical in today's world if you want to succeed. When we come back, we're going to talk about Facebook for just a moment. Facebook, should your business be on Facebook? We'll give you some ideas about what works and what doesn't work and why. 
Should your business be on Facebook? And secondly, we're also going to be talking about connecting with the LGBT community. Where are they hanging out at? And how do you reach them? Those stories and more when we come back. This is Insight on Business. We're brought to you by Fuersa. Fuersa, tax and professional accountants who are going to work hard for your business until the cows come home. Fuersa, Fuersa of Des Moines. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> 